I was looking at this application and trying to think what the best way to attack it was, because there's a lot of stuff in this application. And what I want to do is sort of give you an overview of all the stuff that is in it. Because what gets tough about this is it's, you know, it's hard to approach this in a linear manner. As soon as I start talking about the first thing in it, it refers to something, and I have to explain that. Then to explain that, I have to explain that, and so on. So my thought was if I could sort of introduce you to some of the new concepts in this and at least give you an idea of what's going on with them. That if we came into them in the code, we wouldn't necessarily have to deal with it right away. We could just say, well, remember I said that this is what that does. And we could sort of skip over it and then come back and look at it in more detail later. So that's my idea today. Uh, we'll get as far uh, as I can. I hope I introduce most of the main concepts to you. Um, but um, to refresh your memory what this is, this is a Twitter search um, application where you can enter in a search for Twitter and you can save them and then you can come back later on and run them. So if there was something that you were really interested in, um, you know, I think I did Cleveland sports, I think I did programming languages and, and so on. You could, you could create a name for that search, put in the search terms that you wanted, and then uh, come back um, later and see it. So we'll take a look at that in a second before we go over um, the different concepts in this application. All right, so we go and run this. All right, nothing up my sleeves as they say. You can't see my taskbar down here, but the emulator is not running, okay? Which means that when we pull this app up, we're all gonna, already gonna see data there. And that's important in this particular case. So I run it. I just wanna remind you of how this acts first. And then we will um, go into the overdue, overview of the main concepts. So we go and run it. Our emulator starts up. And there we go. And there are different ones that, that I have entered. Cleveland Sports, which if we, um, if we double click on it, it goes out and searches for Cavs, um, Indians, Browns, and so on. Object-oriented programming, I think I did a search for C-sharp and Java. Old school games, Tetris, Pong, Galaxian, Space Invaders. All right. So there you have it. We can enter a new search by typing it in. So maybe I'll do a search for Lorain County. Community College. I'll give it a tag of LCCCC. Notice a few things. I want you to observe these things as we're talking. As we type in LCCCCCC, <laughs> as we type in the L then three C's, notice the button appeared. The button it didn't appear until it was okay to save it. So that's kind of uh, an interesting phenomenon here. Uh, in other words, when we don't have anything in that text box is not okay to save. So you can't save it with a, a blank tag, which is a nice sort of validation, you know. We can go and we can save it. Um, if we long press on this, we get a choice to share, edit, or delete. And if we press edit, it populates that, and we can save it. Um, we can actually duplicate uh, tags by like, for example, if I wanted Old School Games Part 2 or something like that, I could, I don't want to do that, I could long press on it, edit it, if I change the tag, it duplicates it. And it's funny, the, the, the book spins this like it's a feature. And look, you can 
you know, it can change type, but you can you can use this to clone a search, you know, if you want to go and tweak it a little bit. All right. Uh, I hope I hope when we're done with today's uh, discussion, especially, we'll we'll understand why it works that way. All right. And we can delete it, and we can uh, share it, which if you long mouse on this, and I click share, um, it brings up this dialogue, which is interesting. It's just your messages, I think. Yeah, just your messages, so you can go and, and take that. I wasn't sure exactly where that came from. All right, so we, we've seen how that, that is and how that works. Um, most of the stuff in the XML files I'm not going to go over. You can review those on your own. There's, there's uh, dimension files. There's a dimension file for a width of greater than 820 dp. There is a couple of styles files out here. Style XML and a style for version 21 and greater. Uh, we have our icons. We have an, an interesting thing here. We have a, uh, a vector graphic. Um, I'm not, don't quite know off the top of my head where that comes in, but we might talk about that at some point. We have an arrays file um, that is uh, distinct from the strings file. But for the most part, this is the same old sort of stuff that we've been doing. So even if we haven't done exactly this, we've done stuff like it, and you should be able to adapt it. We're going to focus on these uh, different um, XML files, and we're going to focus on there are different classes here. Typically in the past, our application has only consisted of one class, whereas here we have a class, um, several classes, um, that each serve their own role. All right? One thing to notice about this is notice that this UI is dynamic. All right? So, for example, I didn't want do that. Let me make another one of these. I'll edit it. I'll make one for try C. It's going to clone it with another tag. So there it's there. Notice that as you add items to this list, this list gets bigger, all right? So this is a different UI than we've seen before. In the, UI, the, in the UIs that we've seen before, there was always like a fixed number of things. There's a certain amount of text boxes, a certain amount of labels. Whereas this has a, an example of a UI that expands. In other words, we can add stuff to the UI. Now that's an important concept that we'll be talking about uh, in today, and we'll give you an overview for that. So I hope I remember all the things I want to give an overview for. But that's, uh, that's sort of the plan for this. And then any more detail that we go into, we'll go deep in, in, in more detail for everything uh, in, in this application. First thing I want to talk about is the idea of persistent storage. What does it mean if I say persistent storage? Yeah, that it's not just there temporarily, it's there until you get rid of it, all right? Which means that it's there after you shut down the application, it's there after you shut down your device, you're really saving it, you know? It would be the difference between opening up Excel and doing some calculations and going out without saving it. That's not storing in persistent storage. If you ever go and create a file and save it to the disk, that's persistent storage, which means that if you come back tomorrow, it should be there barring disk failure or someone deleted it or whatever. All right. So this application has persistent storage. As the, if the application closes, if the application or if the device uh, turns off, the data is still there that we saved before. So that's a, that's a first for here. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna look at a couple of different ways to accomplish persistent storage in this course. This first one is through the use of what's called shared preferences. So in this code, where you see the word shared preferences, 
preference is about saving it so that you can pull it up later. That's the persistent storage component. Now, shared preferences are like this. You can give a name to something. You can give a name for the preferences that you're going to save, the set of preferences. And if I'm not mistaken, in this example, the data is stored under the name of searches. All right? So searches is the name that this set of data is stored under. All right? Now, how is it stored? It's stored as an array. And I, I think we're all familiar with an, what an array is. An array is a data structure that can contain multiple items, as opposed to a variable, which typically, plain old variable, typically just points to, points to one item. But it's a particular kind of array, all right? It is sometimes called a, a hash table, all right? Um, or a, a hash array, or uh, it is sometimes, I've heard it called an associative array. Do any of those words mean anything to you? Essentially, the idea of an associative array or a hash table is that you refer to elements not by a number like you do in a, in a, in a normal array. You would say array sub 0, array sub 1, array sub x, something like that. In an associative array, you uh, refer to elements by what's called a key. All right? So the elements, instead of having numbers, essentially have names. All right, so guess what the key is going to be for our associative array called searches? All right, what do you think the key is going to be? How are we storing data? We have two pieces of data. We have a tag and we have a search. So what do you think the key is? What, how, what is the, the name? It's going to be the tag. So we store elements in the array according to its tag. So the tag, the specific value of the tag, points to a value. And sometimes it's called a key. Which means my associative array looks something like this. I don't remember all the things, but... Um, um, oh, well, I'm right up here. I'll, I'll fake them. There's a tag, CCC, that points to the search of Cuyahoga Community College. There is a tag, LCCC, which points to Lorraine County Community College. There's a tag called Cleveland Sports that points to Indians, Browns, Cavaliers. There's one called OO that points to Java in C sharp. And finally, there is oh, old school games that point to things. So this is our array. And these are the keys to the array. So we don't have indexes like numerical indexes. We don't ask for the first element. We will ask for the element that has a key of CC or CCC, and that will pull up the search for Cuyahoga Community College. So in this associative array, we're storing a data structure that looks like this. We're storing an array of values, and instead of having a numerical index, they have a string name. And again, it's sometimes called an associative array. You associate this name with this value. All right? And if you think about it, this is a pretty straightforward way to store preferences for an app. You could store, for example, a user's profile for your application. Um, what's your user profile? It usually consists of a handful of things. You know, name, email address, blah, 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 blah. You know, um, and so on. So you're not talking about storing, like, tremendous volumes of data in these guys. All right? You're just storing something that you want to keep around and you want to easily be able to use it. All right? 
So that is the shared preferences bit. All right. Associative array, and it's stored that way. All right. Next thing I want to talk about is the, recycle, the recycler view. All right. The recycler view is a view on the screen. like this. We have our main screen. We have our edit or our text boxes where we can edit a new search and up pops up the little save button. We then have the searches that we have entered before. for those. And this is scrollable. All right. This is an improvement of uh, what in previous versions of Android were called a list view. Here's the improvement of it. Now we're not taking into account all of the uh, capabilities of the recycle view. We're using it pretty much just like a plain old list view was. But if you can imagine an application um, that could pull down hundreds of stuff from the web. If you went, for example, and, and you know, if you were eBay and you wrote an e, a, a, a search to search your, uh, to search the eBay database and you wrote an Android application to do that and you typed in computer, well, how many computers are there on eBay? You know, millions of them, right? If the device had to wait for all those things to load before it displayed anything, that device would be sitting there forever. You know, it would be sitting there for a very, very, very long time. So what is likely to happen, all right? What happens is, is as you scroll through there, it's constantly going out and retrieving more items and filling up the spaces. And as you, as you scroll back, it will go back and re-retrieve some items. If I scroll an, uh, an item off the screen, for example, it no longer needs that, and it can get rid of that space in the, uh, in the uh, recycle view, hence the term recycle view. In other words, I could scroll through, let's say, 500 items, but it doesn't take up 500 items worth of memory on my device because it's constantly showing me only a few of them. And as, it, as it's done with one thing, it'll, it'll recycle that memory so that I can see the next thing and so on down the line. That is a recycle view, all right? It's a list, all right? It can have many items on it. I don't know if there's a limit, probably not, but it can have many items on it. And um, it, it, it can be written in such a way that you are f continually freeing up and, and reusing uh, memory so you're not taking up um, you know, tons of, of resources on your phone and you're not waiting for tons of stuff to load before it will display anything. Now, this is dynamic, right? By dynamic, it means how many rows are in this? There's as many rows in this as we put in. So I could go in and put in another row, or I could delete a row, or I could add two rows, or whatever. So it's dynamic, which means that this guy is going to get created a slightly different way, all right? In all our examples before, we've had a very hard-coded uh, layout. We've gone in, we've, we've defined that there's a certain number of text boxes, and there you go. In this case, what we have is we have a layout that represents what a new row in this recycle view is going to look like. So we have a little XML. Little XML file that represents one row. When there's a new row added to that recycle, what we do is we 
explode that view. All right, it's called exploding. We're going to take it, and we're going to take this layout, and we're going to use that to create a new view in our recycle view. So this is going to contain the layout of the new row that's going to get added. This layout is going to be used to sort of, how do I want to say, it sort of brings to life that view by adding all the necessary rows. And every time a new row is added, this is brought up and this is exploded and is used to create a new row in this. Yes? So it's like a skeleton, basically? It's like a skeleton. It's like a template for a new row. Okay. Yeah. So this initially starts out with nothing in it. And we'll dynamically add as many as we need to. And if we need more, we're going to add more. But there's an XML file that contains a layout for this. All right. That's how we'll do any sort of dynamic things. We'll have the layout of, uh, how do I want to say, the layout of the thing that's, that could be dynamic, that we could have multiples of. All right. These are just like our old school text boxes, just like we had before. Right? Because there's only two places on the screen for those. We're not adding to that. So that can be done as before. But in here, we're going to have an XML file that has that. That's a skeleton or it's a template of what a new row is going to look like. All right? And put in there. We have a couple other things that are pretty, pretty straightforward, or at least on an overview level. They're straightforward to understand what, what we mean. If you long press, on one of these. Up pops a dialog. And in our case, the dialog says, do you want to edit, delete, or share? All right? If we tap on it, if we click on it, it actually goes and does that search. All right? So, there's going to be actually a couple listeners. There's going to be a listener to what to do on these things if there's a long click. There's going to be a listener of what to do if there's a short click. Now, are we going to have a different listener for each row? Well, probably not, right? Because we don't know how many rows there are. We'll be using the same listener, but the listener is going to be smart enough to know who got clicked. All right? So it's going to be the same listener that's going to listen for a long press here, long press here. And it's going to call the same code, but that code's going to be smart enough to know that this is guy was clicked the first time, this guy was clicked the second time. Now what, we'll do the similar thing with the click. I said click, I meant the long press. So the long press or the click, there'll be listeners to handle each of those things. But there won't be a different listener for each of the rows in here. They all share the same listener. All right? When we click on this, it actually goes to a brand new screen. And as a general rule, you can think of that, you know, a screen is presented to the user for them to do something as an activity. So this is calling a new activity that goes and does this. And in this case, it actually runs out to Twitter and does the actual search that we've typed in. Not the tag that we've typed in, but the search that corresponds to the tag that we've typed in. Now, this will create what's called an intent. All right? An intent says that our, our um, what do I want to say? Our application wants to do something that's out of its realm. Or let me rephrase that, a, a better way to put that because that's not completely accurate. Our activity wants to do something that's out of this activity's realm. So we're going to specify what it is we want to do. The Android operating system is smart enough to know what activity um, to, uh, uh, or, or yeah, what activity to initiate. It's smart enough to know that. So for example, and there could be potentially multiple, act, uh, multiple applications that could handle an intent. I'll give you a good example. You may have the Twitter app loaded on your phone. You may also have your web browser on your phone, which you do. All right, you have Chrome. 
both Chrome and your Twitter app can go into a Twitter search. All right? When that happens, you're typically asked, what do you want to do with this? If there's more than one activity, or one, more than one application that can handle an intent, it typically will ask you which you want to use, and it will ask you if you want to do it every time or just this time. A classic example of this is if I, like, if I go and open a music file, an MP3, or if I go to open a PDF, for example, on my phone. I have a few apps that can handle opening a PDF. All right? Well, <clears throat> it will ask me, which of these apps do you want to open it with? And then it will ask me, do I want to do that just this time, or do I want to do this every time? All right? So there's an intent is where you're going to do something that's outside of your activities realm, and that intent typically will start up a new activity, which could be in your app, or it could be in another app. All right, depending on exactly what it is. And the Android uh, operating system sort of figures that out for you. And also figures out if there's any sort of ambiguity between like what you wanted and, and you know, between what, what the intent is and, and the applications that you have. All right? Likewise, if you didn't have any applications that could handle uh, the intent, it will tell you that as well. All right. So let's go and let's look at some actual code here. So I think we have it. I think these are the main things that I have uh, an overview for. All right. Let's go and let's look at, um, let's start looking at this app and start looking at it in more detail. All right. So. I said we're going to ignore these down here unless there's something I, I haven't thought about that we need to go and visit them. But I think those are pretty self-explanatory or straightforward based on what we did. There are three layout files. All right, We have an activity main file. That is, uses a coordinator layout, uh, has an app bar, has a toolbar, has a floating action button, and that's it. The middle section then, I have an include, to include in the layout content main. So what this effectively does is this, this makes each individual one of these a little more straightforward. This is sort of the shell that gives us The, the, the application bar and will give us that floating button when we want it to appear and gives us some other features if we want. This stuff here is going to be in our content main. And we simply include that. If any of you have done PHP before, um, an include file simply says, like, act like you've pasted the code from this file in that file. So, the nice thing is we can have it in separate files so that you can, like, it simplifies each of the files. So our content main file is here, and that's what includes a relative layout that contains our input boxes, our edit text, and the recycler view. Yes? The include itself does it, but the file that you include will. All right, so in other words, I wouldn't write any, all I'm going to do with the include is say, hey, put the code from this guy right in here. Any styleable attributes, I put it in here, in this one. 
this is a nice way to sort of give all your apps sort of the, a, a certain framework that works, um, you know, the UI a certain framework that works at. Works consistently and, and, and so on. This last XML file, the line item, is what you said, the skeleton for a new line. It simply consists of a single text view. This is called text view. All right. Simply represents what we're going to put in here every time we have a new item. Every time we've saved a new search, it's going to use this to describe what the new line in the recycle view looks like. So it's simple, just as a text view. If we wanted to make it more complicated, we would add stuff to this and populate it. Here's an interesting thing, sort of keep in the back of your head. What's the ID for this text view? Well, it's just text view. Is that going to cause us any problem? Is that going to cause us any problem when we click on one of these? If all of these text views have the name text view? Well, obviously the answer to that is no. <laughs> all right? But we're going to have to figure out how, it, how we're able to use the same ID for different things. Yes? Where it says height and it leaves a, like an extension to somewhere else, where is that? Right there? Layout what? height? Right there it says layout height. Oh, layout height? Yeah. What is list preferred item height exactly? Well, that's a good question. Let's Google it and find out. <laughs> All right. Of course, I understand part of this expression list preferred height is preferred list I am height, but I really don't get this stuff, and Google didn't help. All right. The marker refers to you referring to a style attribute. So question simply means use the value defined by the attribute called list preference item in the namespace Android. Yes. Okay. What would be the advantage of using that default height instead of just giving your own? Consistency. Because if, if people use the preferred item height, then if you look application to application, it will remain constant and consistent. Uh, that's a good question. I don't. I don't know that. Okay. So we're going to dive in, and we're going to look at the main activity. All right. But first. We're going to look. I posted this entry earlier today to Canvas. Recycler view. Let's look at what the Android documentation says about the recycler view. All right, recycler view has a few things associated with it an adapter and a layout manager. All right, we're going to focus on the adapter. This is similar in concept to, if, if all of you have done some ASP.NET coding, 
Some? Has everyone done some? Okay. This is similar to data binding if you've done ASP.NET. If not, don't worry about it. What this is, is this a way to connect, and this is, you know, um, how, do, how do I want to put this? A very good practice in programming is separating the visual aspect of what you have with the actual data itself. So you're not going to smash everything together. You have a source of the data, you have the way that you want to display it, and you somehow tie those two together. In ASP.NET, that's called data binding. All right? Here in, in, in the Android world, you have a, something called an adapter. And what that adapter is going to do is it's going to um, connect your data to the way it's going to be visually displayed. Now, where is our data in this example? Where does our data get put? This is where I was talking about it's kind of circular. That's why I wanted to present sort of a lot of the things uh, up front, and then we'll go in and we'll hone in in detail. Where is the data for this application saved at? Associative array. Associative array in shared preferences. Okay, so this is where the data is going to be. This adapter is going to connect the data from there to this recycler view. So it's going to match those things up. So, that's what this guy is, the search's adapter. I said explode before. I don't know where I got that word. Actually, it's inflate. Exploding sounds violent. It didn't sound right to me as I was saying it. Inflating is the correct word. Okay. We'll view this in a few minutes, but this is what ties our data, our raw data, which is out there, shared preferences, to the recycled, uh, recycler uh, view. So main activity, search adapter, which is sort of the glue, the link between our data and the presentation, and we have a whole class for the divider the little line between the items. Go figure. Whoops. All right. So let's look at the main activity. Oops. The main activity starts like most of these things do, by declaring some instance variables. These are called instance variables because there's going to be one of these per instance of the activity. All right. Another way to say it is these are variables that are accessible throughout the entire class, throughout the entire object, throughout the entire activity. So the things that I name here are accessible everywhere. One of them is a string constant called searches. If you remember from what I put on the board, that's the name of our section of shared preferences. All right. If you think about it, it makes sense. Each app or each developer of app should have their own section of shared preferences. Because how many different people are going to have like a name or an email address or something like that? We want to make sure that what I do doesn't interfere with some other application. So I have my own little area in shared preferences. I have my edit text, so a text box for the query, uh, the floating action button, the shared preferences object, a list of strings which correspond to the tags, and finally I have my search adapter. That's going to be the glue that's going to hold my recycle view, uh, recycler view uh, to the actual data. All right, I set my content view. I do some things with the toolbar. We're not terribly interested in that. I grab references to my Edit text fields, these guys up here. And I assign my listeners to them. Now, I 
I grab the shared preferences for searches. Searches is what? That's the name of my little section of the shared preferences data. So I'm grabbing a, I'm grabbing that collection of things. I'm grabbing that associative array or hash table, which includes both the tags and the, the data items that correspond to them. I then grab tags equals new array list, save searches, get all, key set. Can we translate that into English? All right. Tags is a new array list. All right. What's the difference between an array list and an array in Java? Pardon me? Yeah, an array list has dynamic sizing. So uh, an array you declare as being a certain size. An array list is dynamic. It can expand and contract. So I'm grabbing an array list, which is other than that, there's different ways of addressing the elements of it, but think of it basically as a resizable array. All right. Um, I'm grabbing an array list of these tags. Where are those tags? They're in my save searches object. The save searches object is a pointer to my shared preferences searches section. And mode private, I would think, means that other applications can't use my shared preferences. All right? I would think that's what it would mean. I'm saying get for every entry in there. Remember, the searches, the searches section of the shared preferences is this associated array, associative array. So I want to grab this entire associative array. I want to get all the keys. What are the keys? The keys are the names of the array element. What we've called in this example the tags. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting a list of all the tags. So when I'm done, I have an array list that contains all the tags that I've saved. Do I have the actual search that I want to perform? No. That's, it. That's still in the shared preferences, but tags doesn't include that. All right. Tags is simply the list of tags. Later on, when I select one of the tags to do something to it, then I'll go look up the other piece of it. But for right now, all I have in this array list is the tags. I'm going to sort those tags. That's why those are always in alphabetical order. All right? I'm grabbing a pointer to the recycler view. I'm using a linear layout manager. So boom, 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 boom. I'm just adding things right down a, right down a row for the, the, the um, recycler list. And then I, I create my adapter. And I set my adapter to the, I set that recycler controls adapter to this adapter object. All right, I want to get through at least this line today. The floating action bar we can action button we can save till next time. But I do want to get through this. So let's understand what that means. The recycle, recycler view, I'm setting the adapter to this adapter I create. All right? So it's going to use this class to create an adapter object, and it's going to set that adapter object as the recycler views adapter. Why uh, inside of when you're creating that adapter it says uh, tags that item click listener and log click listener. Why does it need the listeners? It needs the listeners because this adapter, the 
Let's look at the adapter. Good time and I need to look at the adapter. Oh, here we go. Let's follow this through. Adapter equals new searches adapter. And then I'm passing it three arguments, the tags and the new click listener. This is calling a constructor on the searches adapter, right? The searches adapter is this class, and it has a constructor that is expecting three arguments. Tags, click listener, and long click listener and it sets those attributes all right this tags equals tags this click listener equals click listener this long click listener equals long click listener so I'm setting these properties so after I run the constructor I have this searches adapter which extends the recycler view adapter so it's an adapter and I have defined these variables. Now, in the next line, I set the adapter of the recycler view to this. That is going to end up calling get the sequence of this correct. It's going to create a view holder for every item on the list of tags. When it creates that view holder, what is it going to do? First thing it's going to do is it's going to create a view using the layout inflator. All right. What does that do? That goes and takes this little mini XML file and inflates it and creates an actual view object. All right. So we have now a view object that contains everything in that little XML file. We then find, and, and this, is, this is critical, we find view by ID using the ID of text view. Remember I puzzled the question before. How can that work? We have a bunch of things called text views. The way that it works is we're only looking at one row of those things at a time. So it's able to find the view that was just created, so the new view that we're adding to the recycler view, it finds a text box which is called text view. And then we set for that item that was just created the click listener and the long click listener. So the main activity uh, section there is not going, is uh, not setting the click listener. It's, it's the search as a 
It's a search is adapter, and the reason for that is we have to set sort of the short answer to your question is we have to set for each row in there a click lister and a on long click lister. And the main activity only knows that recycle view. It doesn't know details about the innards of that. All right. Who knows the innards of that? The adapter does. Because the adapter creates each creates individual row. All right. So for each item in that tags and on binding, we um, we do two things in here that, that are critical. We we find out how many rows we're gonna create by getting the size of the tags array list. And we also grab uh, uh, and set the, the, the text view, um, we set to uh, the, the tag in that position. So as we loop through the array view, we create the tag um, as the title, or not the title, but the text that's on the, um, the, the view. So what this adapter does when it's done doing its thing, when it's been created and when it's been bound to the recycle view, it does several things. It runs through the, that array list of tags. For each element in that array list of tags, it creates a view. All right? That view is a text view. All right? That text view gets its text from the name of the tag and gets the on click listener and on long click listener that was passed to it from the main activity. Now the code for those long click listeners and click listeners are gonna be in the main activity, but the assigning of those to the individual views that comprise the recycle view happens in the adapter because the adapter is the one that knows everything about it. All right? So this is important. Again, a lot of new concepts with this. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, that's about the time we have for today. I have uploaded uh, this app. I think it's in under last week, actually. So you can look at the code if you want to. And uh, we'll pick up with this next time and start to look like what happens when we add something. What happens when we short press? What happens when we long press on this? So any questions? All right.